is a wonderful example of where the community has all contributed to this study. So different types of cancers have been sequenced at different places throughout the world and we were able to obtain that data which is now freely available and to analyse it to come up with the gene CUX1 as being a new cancer gene. So what we did was to bring together the genomes of 7,600 cancers and to ask the question, are there any genes within that set of cancers that are mutated more than we would expect by chance? We found that loss of CUX1 leads to uh, an advantage in the, in the cancer cells and in increased growth in at least one in a hundred different types of cancer patients. And what we discovered was that CUX1 was mutated at a low frequency across a range of different uh, types of, of cancer, such as breast cancer um, and leukemias. So it's different from other types of cancer genes because it's mutated at this low frequency across a range of tumours rather than being mutated at a high frequency in one particular tumour type. The identification of low frequency mutations in cancer has been a key challenge in cancer genetics. Um, and this is because in the past we have found mutations in cancer by focusing on specific cancer types. Uh, for instance, identification of the BRCA1 mutations in breast cancer were found this way. Um, only by looking at an extensive collection of over 7,000 different types of cancer were we able to actually look at and, and really tease out the low frequency mutations in cancer. Genomics is a community effort and in this particular study we worked together with investigators throughout the world. Uh, we had access to uh, data from the Cancer Genome Project, the huge compute facilities that we have here at the Institute. We also used the mouse model systems and indeed other areas of the Institute such as computational biology. The cancer genomics data can only tell us so much about the genes we find mutated in cancer. In order to understand the biological consequences of the mutations that we find, we have to turn to model organisms. It's only through these animal studies that we've really been able to prove that, that CUX1 is indeed a new gene associated with cancer. And these animal studies also helped us to step towards the inhibitors or the, or the drugs that may treat this type of, of cancer. Mutations in CUX1 um, lead to dysregulation of a key growth factor signaling pathway uh, called the PI3 kinase pathway. And already in clinical practice, we have drugs which could target this pathway. So I envisage that by using these drugs, we can move quite quickly from identifying patients with these mutations to actual uh, clinical therapy. In our study, we described another 22 genes that are potential uh, tumour suppressor genes or genes that can, may contribute to tumour development. So this has enlightened us to a, a new class of genes that we can now study in more detail in the lab. Our next few years of work will be to discover uh, how those genes work and indeed how we can treat patients who have mutations within those genes.